education, and I'm here to help you with your chemistry. Looking at the problem that we have right here, this would fall into what's known as stoichiometry or stoichiometry. Big fancy chemistry word for cooking with chemistry. And what it does is it allows us to use provided amounts in order to be able to predict give an, uh, an amount of an outcome. But in order to do so, we must first have our recipe. In this case, that's a chemical equation. And so that's where we're going to start. Looking at the information provided so far, it says that under certain conditions, carbon monoxide, which is CO, is going to react with oxygen, which is O2, diatomic molecule. So you've got to make sure to put O2. And it's going to form carbon dioxide, which would be CO2. Now, this is the chemical equation. Unfortunately, however, it needs to be balanced, which means there's the same amount of every element on both sides of the equation. That way it follows the law of conservation of mass. In order to do so, looking at it, since we have an uneven number of oxygens, let's go ahead and make the oxygens even. This gives us four oxygens on the left, as well as two carbons. And if we put a two in front of CO2, we now have two carbons and four oxygens on the right. Now that we have our chemical equation established, we can go ahead and do the stoichiometry. Looking at the provided information, we have 32.9 grams of carbon monoxide and 18.8 .8 grams of oxygen. Since we've been provided two different pieces of information, two different starting quantities, that means we're going to have to do two different conversions. This would be what's known as a limiting reactant problem. We have to convert both of our givens into the same product in order to do a comparison. I can't compare apples and oranges together, but if I know how many servings I can get, that's a better comparison. And so that's what we're going to do. All stoichiometry is done in the same three steps. No matter what the stoichiometry problem is, it's the same three steps. Step one, convert your given amount into moles. And the reason why we do that is because that's the unit that our chemical equation or recipe uses. The second step then is to use our chemical equation, our recipe, to change from what we have into what we desire. And then the last step then would be to convert from the moles of the chemical that we have into whatever it's asking for. In this case, it's asking for grams of carbon dioxide. So that's what we're going to do. Looking at the provided information, we're going to start with the 32.9 grams of carbon monoxide. Grams of carbon monoxide. Now, in order to change this into moles, we're going to have to use the molar mass, which is the mass of that chemical from the periodic table. Taking one carbon and one oxygen and adding them together would give us a molar mass of 28.01 grams for carbon monoxide for every one mole of carbon monoxide. And by setting up our equation like this, it allows the unit to cross off grams of carbon monoxide. And now we're in moles. Since we're now in moles, step two, use the balanced chemical equation. Looking at what we have here, there are two moles of carbon monoxide for every two moles of carbon dioxide. So we'll put the moles of carbon monoxide on the bottom in order to get rid of the unit we already have. And we'll put the two moles of carbon dioxide on top in order to get what we desire. Again, moles of carbon dioxide are going to cancel. And now we're into carbon dioxide. Since the question asks for grams of carbon dioxide, however, that means we have one more step to go. So looking at the periodic table, we know that we need two oxygens, 16 each, and one carbon. That means 16 plus 16 is 32, and plus 12.01 means that this is going to have a molar mass of 44.01 grams for carbon dioxide for every one mole of carbon dioxide. Since our units cancel and we have the one we desire, we can plug it into the calculator. Since we began with three significant figures, that's how many we're going to have to end with. And so doing the math, it seems that the carbon monoxide would be able to produce 51.7 grams of carbon dioxide. Unfortunately, however, there are two different quantities here. And so we're going to have to do a second conversion to see how much can actually get made. So we'll do the same steps. Our equation, 2CO plus O2 yields 2CO2. And this time we're going to convert using the 18 grams of oxygen. So we have 18.8 grams of oxygen. Please remember that oxygen is a diatomic molecule. So when it exists in nature, it has to be written as O2. Step one, convert that into moles. 
Looking at a periodic table, a single oxygen atom has a molar mass of 16.00. So that means this diatomic molecule, two oxygens added together, would have a molar mass of 32.00 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. And again, we cross off our units. Do it every step of the way to double check yourself. Step two then is use your balanced chemical equation to convert from what we have into what we desire. In this case, we have one mole of O2 in our equation. And for every one mole of O2 in our equation, there are two moles of CO2 that are produced. This allows us to then cross off moles of O2, and now we're in moles of CO2. Last step then is to convert from the moles into the quantity desired, which in this case is grams of carbon dioxide. So again, for every one mole of carbon dioxide, it has a molar mass of 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide. If we were to plug this back into the calculator again, and keeping the three significant figures that we started with, this comes out to be 51.7 grams of carbon dioxide. That means then both of our chemicals are gonna produce the exact same amount. So that's your answer, 51.7 grams of carbon dioxide. Please remember, you're not going to add these two values together. You're not going to use up all of one and use up all the other to create double the amount of product. What happens is both of the chemicals will be combined together to produce this one quantity, meaning that your final answer would be 51.7 grams of carbon dioxide. I hope that this has helped, and I look forward to helping you with your chemistry in your future.